A lot of people ask me how you can help with bat conservation in Georgia and how the average person can do something for bats. And the Anabat Project is one way that people can help. It, we're participating in a nationwide survey that includes using Anabat bat detectors on vehicles to run routes and collect calls throughout the U.S. So the main idea is that you run a route using a vehicle that is 30 miles long at 20 miles an hour and collect echolocation calls of bats on a bat detector. And doing it at that speed on a, on a transect like that allows you to measure not only the species but also numbers, which is something you can't get if you're standing in one area. When you get your Anabat kit, either in the mail or someone brings it to you, it's going to have some major components that I want to go over. The fo first most important one is the actual detector itself. This is the Anabat. This is the microphone that records the bat's echolocation calls. And this is the speaker which emits them at a frequency we can hear. There's a lot of other buttons on here, and most of which you don't need to know, but, but they'll be included in the instructions. For this project, we're using a roof-mounted microphone, which is going to replace this microphone on the top of the Anabat. And it has a suction cup that attaches it to the top of the vehicle and allows us to record while we're driving so that the Anabat can be safely inside the vehicle, the microphone can be on top. And the final component is the GPS unit. This is a small GPS unit with a magnet that attaches to the roof of the vehicle and it allows us to get a, an exact location for every bat call that's recorded, which is really important, figuring out where bat activity is along each route. We'll also include a packet with data sheets that have to be filled out for every survey, and a set of magnets that you can use for your vehicle. They're reflective, and you can put them on the front, back, or side, and it will help because you have to drive at a, at a pretty slow speed so these will hopefully help drivers be safe and allow people to understand that we're doing the survey. So the bottom of the GPS unit is a magnet and you can just place it away from the door on top of the vehicle and the cord is going to need to come through the window. There are two ways to power the GPS unit. You can either use an adapter that goes into the cigarette lighter, which will be included in your kit, or a this emergency charger, which is powered by two AA batteries. Today I'm going to show you how to use the emergency charger. There is a switch on the side that says USB. You turn that on and then plug in the detector or the GPS. You'll see a light that indicates that it's working. And there's nothing on the GPS which actually tells you that it's on, but if this light is on or the, or the light is on on the cigarette lighter charger, that lets you know that that, power, that is getting power. This is the microphone unit that mounts to the top of the vehicle. It has a strong suction cup on the bottom which allows you to attach it securely for when you're driving and it, it shouldn't come off during the driving routes. This needs to be placed above the driver area on the vehicle and close enough so that the cord can go down through the window and attach to the Anabat. So you should place it on the vehicle and it should be relatively clear of debris so that the suction cup can, can attach and the vehicle shouldn't be very dirty on the top as well so you get a really good attachment. So to operate the suction cup, you depress the plunger until the red line disappears and you'll be able to see it working. And once you cannot see the red line anymore, it should be attached securely. Then you need to adjust the microphone so that it is pointing straight up in the air. And the attachment allows you to tighten it and just make sure it's secure and then run this cord through your window. The microphone and the GPS unit need to be connected to the Anabat. There are connections on the side and it's pretty easy to see where things go. The GPS unit connects to the serial port on the Anabat. So it attaches by pushing it in and also there's a screw attachment to 
keep it secure. The microphone actually attaches where the other microphone is. You can just pull off the small microphone and attach the cord and you should see a line on the top that lines up with the very top of the Anabat. To power on the Anabat, you push the power button and you'll see lights. The data light is blinking, which means that it is getting a location from the GPS unit. And all of the lights that are on, it should say record and status. It should also be a 16 on the audio division and an 8 on the data division and all this will be written down on the instructions. The sensitivity should be turned to 7. If you start to hear a background noise, like something that sounds obviously not like a bat call, adjust the sensitivity as close to 7 as possible, but you can turn it down to avoid that background noise. Sometimes in the summer, when the insect noise is very loud, you may have to adjust it down just a little, but the, the sensitivity should be very close to 7, if at all possible. Before you get started on your route, you will need to fill out your data sheet. It includes things like your name and your contact information, the date of the survey, which is very important, the route name and number, and the number of the Anabat you're using, that will be located on the, the box. It's also on the side of the Anabat. You also need to record the time that you start your survey. Right now, the Anabat is recording any calls that come over. So we need to know the time when you actually start driving, which is the time your route begins, and the time when it ends. Also, the temperature when you begin and end. This doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to use a thermometer at the site. You can look at it on your phone or on the web, or you can bring a thermometer. Also, the wind and the sky code in the beginning and the end, that's located, a key for that is located on the back of the data sheet. Whether or not the moon is visible and the phase of the moon, which can also be found if you can't see the moon, you should be able to find that information. And any comments about what happened, if you got had to stop during the route, you can put down the times when you actually had the vehicle stopped, any break in the sampling time, any issue along the route that we should know about. And there's also more room on the back for writing additional comments or a map that talks about maybe changes in the route because of road conditions. Then you drive the route, which is approximately 30 miles long in most situations and you need to drive as consistently at 20 miles an hour as you can. In some cases the road conditions don't allow you to drive 20 miles an hour but stay as close to 20 miles an hour as possible and avoid long stops along the route. When you're finished fill out the rest of the data sheet and turn off the detector by pushing the power button and you can disconnect everything that you connected before. At the end of the night, when you've completed your route, you need to remove all the equipment. You should disconnect these from the Anabat. And the GPS has a magnet, so it can just be pulled off of the vehicle. To remove the microphone, just pull on these black tabs until the suction cup releases. And then you can pull it off. The microphone should always be stored pointing down. It's a very sensitive piece of equipment. It's easily damaged in transport and it also is easily damaged by water so you should make sure that you never do your route when there's any amount of rain and always store the microphone with the microphone pointed down.